G'day, everybody. Today we have Joey Schwartz here with us. Um, Joey, you've been in a bit of controversy recently. How are you kind of feeling with all of this? Is it getting to you? You know, how are you feeling? <laughs> no, I was playing. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I feel great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. There's been some controversy. Um, but to be honest, I, I don't really feel like like it's affecting me poorly. The thing is, if I feel like if I'm not confident in something, then it would be very easy to feel bad or regret what I've done so far and the points that I've made. But I just feel very confident in what I've said. And I think that I'm right. So I feel like, you know, whatever comes with it comes with it. And I, I'll i share what I believe to be true. And the feedback is the feedback. It, it is what it is. I don't really feel bad about what's going on so far, actually. Made, it's made life more interesting. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you had a debate with Bart K yesterday and it did really well in terms of views. A lot of people watched it um, and it was quite, you know, a bit heated. And a lot of people would say that you sort of lost the argument or that, you know, Bart K won. Do you, what was your thoughts? Do you think that you sort of had a point in the argument? Do you think that you won or do you sort of think that you lost? Um, well, the way debates work is it's not necessarily the person with the best argument that wins, even if they articulated the best. A lot of the way that debate works has to do with emotion and how emotionally invested you are and how much you talk and how much you interrupt. It's like it's very um, there are a lot of components to it that are actually outside the basic arguments that you are elucidating. So to me, he definitely won in that respect, which probably means like he he would have won um because when you override your opponent so well and you're so much more confident and you're way more demanding and formidable even if you have the losing point it's hard to you know come back yeah. from that or it's yeah so also you know i'm i had no intentions of yelling like i'm i'm not only do i hate yelling and i i just wouldn't have wanted to yell back at bart I'm in a quiet Airbnb with neighbors and like, I'm not going to scream at him. So, you know, it was just really no point. I just kind of sat there calmly and talked as I did. And he was himself. I was myself and it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Mm, um, what, so you've kind of gained a few people that have started to not really like you, your channel that you've lost a little bit of subscribers. What do you think people aren't getting like do you reckon people are misinformed or what do you think your haters kind of aren't understanding or aren't really you know getting hmm. so the people are unsubscribing because they don't but so the, there are a couple reasons why i think it's been like 1500 unsubscribed uh so they think that i'm wrong like that's the first part they think that i'm wrong and they think that i'm like an arrogant cocky just like uh, piece of shit basically that's what they think and um you know i if you put your faith here's a problem if you put your faith and you put all your trust and belief into a select group of people who believe a certain thing then anyone who goes against that is almost the enemy it's like it, it's very much a religious sort of like ideology where you take what bart k and what ken barry and what sean baker say as gospel like it's this is just the the truth what they say is just truth it's like scripture and you know then of course anyone who goes against that will suddenly they're they're wrong and that's a problem with having blind faith in people and that that's kind of what i'm seeing with the people who are unsubscribing they think that i'm this like bad and i'm crazy because I just don't agree with the current standard of, you know, doing carnivore. Um, what? Why else are they unsubscribe? Why else are they angry? They're angry because they also don't like raw meat. Like that, that's that's probably a big one as well. Like they don't want to mm -hmm. believe that raw meat is best because they don't want to eat it. Which I understand. I mean, when I started eating raw meat, it wasn't like something I wanted to do. I wanted to cook, but at the same time. I started doing it because I believed it was best. And I, I like to optimize things. These people, they, they, they just don't want to hold that belief and they're going to do whatever they can. They're going to 
watch whoever they can to try to get reassurance that what they do doing is best, even though it's clearly not. I think also it's important for there to be voices on different sides of the argument um, and sort of these nuances. So then, you know, we can be able to question these things because everyone sort of just believes the same ideology and it just gets shoved down our throat. And I think that whether you were right or, or wrong about what you said, I do think that having those opinions and voices on the other side or some new information is very needed because that's how, you know, societies evolve. That's how revolutions occur. That's how, you know, th things develop and we've reached the truth with people with different opinions, people with different voices. What sort of made you uh, go against the grain even more than you were by being on a carnival diet and even splitting away from this carnival community uh, as such? And, and was it a hard step for you to sort of come out and change your views? Well, first, I, I realized that carnivore is not that special like sure it's a diet that gives you great results but it's not that difficult because it's it's just i mean eating meat is not that hard and sticking to it is not that hard what's hard is raw meat what's hard is raw foods like this is this is honestly next level like it's it, it's eating only raw meat is one like in today's world is so incredibly difficult you can you can eat cooked meat and like be fully functioning in society like you can go to restaurants you can get cooked steak it's it, people say like this is so hard it's a lifestyle change and i mean sure it is a change but it, you can adapt to it and you can work with it you know you you just like you eat the meat without the vegetables like it's really not all that but this is very different like this is a big change and the i split away even more not because i wanted to but because i felt like that that was what the truth was. I mean, the truth was away from what I had previously done. And it, I didn't do it because I wanted to isolate myself or because I wanted to be different. There was really no, like that's really doesn't benefit me in any way, just being different from anyone else, everyone else. I split away because I felt like I needed to, to share truth. That's That's really what it comes down to. So what was it that kind of started your fascination with raw meat? Like, how did you come across that? Yeah. And how did you know that this is the way forward for you? I had bought, I had gone to the grocery store and I was doing carnivore and I had bought a piece of meat. I think it was a, a lamb steak or something. And I had soccer practice in about an hour, but I was hungry. And for some reason I couldn't cook. I don't remember what the reason was. Maybe our gas wasn't like, wasn't working on the stove or something. And so I just took it up because I'd seen people eat raw meat before on, on YouTube. So I took it, my meat to my room and I just ate it raw. And I remember the feeling after it was, it was like, I was high. It was just, I mean, it was just so different. And people who say cooked meat is the same as raw meat. They've never had that feeling before. They've never had that raw meat before. And you, you eat enough raw meat, like half a pound of raw meat in one sitting you're gonna feel this just euphoria it's it, it's a high and like people can go ahead and say the enzymes don't matter the bacteria don't matter you know the the, the loss of nutrients don't matter fine but what explains that high that crazy high that you get from raw meat there's something there like the, like there's something preserved in raw meat in, in, in its raw form that heat destroys there has to be something and like because pe that feeling is just something else and since then I, I was always testing it out kind of seeing if I could manage this and I was doing raw meat here and there but it was never consistent and I started doing it consistently it's hard to put a timeline on these things but maybe maybe I started doing it more a lot more a couple months ago and then like really consistently a month ago and yeah that that's about right yeah Mm. And did you find, um, wait, sorry, I had this question, I forgot it, but I'll cut it out, obviously. Uh, but yeah, Joey, do you still find that you get this, this natural high from the raw meat or do you only just feel the negative effects when you um, have cooked meat? So I do feel somewhat of a high from raw meat. You get a really profound high from raw organs. Like, that's just crazy. Um, I've had that off the liver. 
yeah 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 i mean it's just really crazy after organs and yeah it's it, it is you know a lot of my diet i probably only do a pound of meat a day so it's really not that much meat most people on carnivore are doing several pounds of cooked meat i'm just a pound and then the rest of my diet is eggs dairy um like a couple plant foods i'm doing now but not much maybe like five to ten percent of my diet is plant foods but it's still very low carb so could still fit within the confines of like carnivore or ketovore or something um and yeah it's that's kind of that's kind of it um just still feel very good eating this way definitely improving and like healing faster than on regular carnivore mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you sort of go about advocating this way of eating when it's quite hard because a lot of the like studies and a lot of the stuff is more on cooked meat and a lot of the things that you're sort of saying the benefits, of course, they have to be more anecdotal or just, you know, the stuff about the denaturing of certain vitamins. Um, so do you find it difficult to sort of push this argument forward that raw meat is better than cooked meat just because of it's mostly anecdotal or... Yeah. So, I mean, it's a good point. It is mostly anecdotal, but to me, that's the best evidence that we have. I mean, a person's personal account, if a person goes from eating like a certain way and then eats a different way and then their health improves, like that way that they're eating is now is better than the one before. It's like something is better now. Like there's a lot that we can actually extrapolate from just basic anecdotes. And I'm now more in the raw meat space and I'm, I have connections with a lot of the raw meat people. I talk to them. I see their stories. I do that research. And, you know, we always say like you go carnivore, you never go back. Right. Well, the people who go raw meat really never go back. Like that's like they, they actually are stuck in raw meat because once you get there, it's just so incredibly good. You, you, nobody switches out of it even more so than car like way more, um, than carnivore so you know it's it, it's just I, I'm, I'm seeing so many so many benefits and so many people benefiting from doing raw meat just being in the space it's it's very clear to me and so, so for convincing people um i would say the anecdotes are, are very good like the anecdotes suffice for, for me but a lot of people are convinced by the nutrients thing like it's just more nutritious. I mean, raw meat's more nutritious. What, what? Why would you want to eat the less nutritious alternative? But to me, that's not even the most powerful thing. To me, the most powerful thing is something that I don't even know of, because I can't explain the euphoria. It, the euphoria is not from extra vitamin C or B vitamins. The euphoria is from something else. Maybe it's the bacteria. It could be the bacteria, which our body obviously needs and benefits greatly from. We need bacteria to remove toxins and stuff. Um, and we need and enzymes also, in my opinion, are beneficial. But th there's something there, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just our body kind of saying that it wants more, and it's rewarding us for feeding it properly. I I don't know what enables that response. But it, like the the best part of raw meat is something I can't even explain to people. Yeah, fire out. Um, a question with the with the raw meat stuff as well. You said you'd. Uh, implemented a couple plant foods i find that when you hop on carnival and you have plant foods the the come down is pretty noticeable like when you do have when you do cheat you feel like absolute garbage did you do you feel that with raw meat more so so i don't really view the plant foods that i'm eating as bad like i actually view them as very good so i'll tell you what i'm doing a little bit of so I, it's all a lot of it is focused around hydration. So given that I'm traveling and that even at home, I don't have good sources of water. What I try to do is find plant foods that are super high in water. So let me see here. Like all like I, I have these carrots <clears throat> and I'll like chew the I'll like I'll like chew the carrot and spit out the fiber. And it's just pure water. Like after I eat a carrot or something. Oh, you I'm chew it, you chew it and you spit out the fiber. You spit out just yeah, yeah. Then? So you yeah, chew like, on it just, and then you spit it out. Yeah, it's like carrot juice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's so hydrating. And there's actually tons of minerals and there's like magnesium, potassium, sodium. There's all the electrolytes and 
Do you get the anti-nutrients actually... with that or no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty very low in anti-nutrients and um yeah. the and uh like cucumber and carrot and and the, the, those anti-nutrients that are in there aren't binding to like the, the nutrients and also they are um like very high in enzymes like it's actually a pr like a pretty nutritious high rating food to eat and it doesn't cause me any problems and like people can say like they, they go carnivore and if they eat a vegetable it like kills them or whatever but um you know to me i'm not seeing that i'm derailed or uh like messed up in any way from the addition of small amounts of plant foods especially when the fiber's out it's just it's just mm -hmm. like without the fiber it's really no issue at all i, I find that it's i'm only i'm only benefiting from the addition of some plant foods like i'm just not really being dogmatic about it i mean there's thousands of plant foods that exist and there's like five different types of animals that we eat you have to think just reasonably that it's quite likely that there's some plant foods that the human body can tolerate without reaping negative effects from and there's probably some plant foods that if done eaten and prepared in a certain way can even be beneficial it's just worth being open to so i'm finding that the carrots are fine um not really having much fruit although there is good local fruit here and i've had maybe one every couple of days or something this is just a coconut water, like an organic coconut water, mostly fat, uh, not much, really? not many carbs fat. in it. Yeah, it's like the blend. It's like a whole blended coconut. So it's not just oh. the water. It's like a whole thing. Yeah. Damn. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I'm finding that the addition of small amounts of carbs, like maybe 20, anywhere between 20 and 40 grams for me is not an issue. I mean, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to continue this, if I'm going to go back to only meat. Or only animal foods but i mean i, I feel like I'm, I'm doing fine on this and i don't feel like i'm held back in any way yeah um and before everyone goes in comments or oh, joey's advocating carrots and stuff i think this whole community i think like personally for me i don't see a benefit to consuming any plant matter for my situation at the moment but i think everyone is in a different situation and while you might yield some benefit or you can tolerate plant foods other people can't so i think that if you can tolerate it then perfect like that's great for you yeah i just say that like there seems to be a lot of hate between each other in this in the community and even i posted a video recently how i was adding garlic powder and rosemary to my steak and some people in the comments were you know saying i was advocate advocating for quitting carnivore and things like that but no like at the end of the day we all share the common thing that we want to live an animal-based life where we eat mainly meat because we know, because it makes us feel amazing. And if there's like little nuances in there for different people, like I think that's completely fine. And I think we shouldn't bash each other for that. And we should just um, support each other and support what we're trying, give new ideas so we can all live, everyone can try their own different thing. And then you can find the optimum diet for yourself. And I also think that people are so heavily focused on the diet. Like, for example, putting a bit of powder on your steak, yes, that might make a difference, but if like that might make a difference, but the different if you're not exercising, if you're not doing all these good habits, getting your circadian rhythm in check, sleeping well, those things are going to yield a way better benefit than adding a little bit of powder to like your steak, even though I don't do that personally. But people that do, they get a lot of hate. But I mean, if you're already optimized, if your life is already fully optimized, then sure, that would be negative. But like, people are critiquing these little things when there's so many other things that can yield a bigger benefit than just removing the garlic from the stomach, like other habits in your life. Yeah, like a lot of people, they'll they'll be bickering over whether or not you should be adding garlic to your steaks, but then they're the ones who are sitting at an office all day. It's like yeah. they're at their little computers, like back and forth with no sunlight ever. It's like, no, you can't put garlic. No, I want to put garlic. It's like, it's so stupid. These people who don't have other apps, factors of their lives optimized who are stressing over something that's so irrelevant and yeah, that's my like the people mm -hmm. people really do miss the bigger picture mm -hmm. and honestly the, the keys to, to health really lie in high quality sleep you know moving around getting light the having good relationships with people um and just like living like a, a human being should live that you, you get those things in check 
like who cares if you put a little garlic on your steak mm. or if you chew like some carrot juice like it, it's not it's not <laughs> it doesn't matter that much you know um, yeah the, i feel like the people is just like one, one aspect of say there's five pillars of health let's say it's like um sunlight sleep relationships nutrition and maybe exercise or something and i feel like the carnival diet is just one of those five pillars so if you're 99 if you're eating 99 percent like to the optimal or like to the optimal way then i feel like yeah. you'll have a bigger benefit if you you know increase all the other pillars and just focusing on like that one percent mm. do, do you guys do you guys know people who eat a horrible diet but are still like seem healthy and happy and stuff i'm sure you do yeah 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 yeah, yeah right and and you know you, you got to look at these people and you got to think you know how can they eat so poorly and still thrive and it's because there's diet isn't everything it's a part of it but i know people who are like incredibly healthy and these people eat like so badly they, they eat a horrible diet but if you're happy all the time you live a good life you get sunlight you you enjoy your life there's a lot of ways that you can combat the negative effects of a of a, of a poor diet so it, it goes to show that the diet can be optimizing and change your life but there's other things to consider always yeah, like, obviously, you should always strive for the most optimal thing. Um, like, there's no reason to purposely self-sabotage your diet and eat, like, junk food, whatever. But, yeah, it's just sort of that massive emphasis everyone has on nutrition when, you know, there's all these other factors that will yield a way bigger benefit. Yeah, I would say that nutrition, though, kind of is, does help all the other is, aspects yeah. as well. Because if you're feeling better from your nutrition, it's going to help the other aspects. But, yeah, definitely, there's a, there's a bit of a narrow-sidedness in our space. I mean... I like, I mean, so, so nutrition does feed into the other aspects. Like it, it can module your stress levels. It can help you feel more motivated, so on and so forth. But what people actually fail to recognize is that our stress levels, our cortisol levels, the way we go about our day, getting sunlight. I mean, these things also affect the absorption of the minerals and nutrients in our food. Like, for example, if you're not getting any sunlight, then you're, you're not going to convert any, um, like iodine to your active T4 hormones. If you don't, if you get no sunlight at all, so it doesn't matter how much quality food you eat, you're not going to produce these hormones. And if you are way too stressed out, you're going to have electrolyte imbalances, even if you eat adequate amounts of all electrolytes. So people know that the diet affects the lifestyle, but they don't realize that the lifestyle affects actually how well that diet is utilized by the body. So mm -hmm. we, we really need to fix everything. Hmm. but from our sort of experience we do think that nutrition say if there's out of everything we think that at least with my story i believe i was trying to do everything else but i just believe that having that nutrition that right fuel source coming in is like the number one i agree yeah so it's number one for sure yeah, yeah it's number one for sure by a big way i'd say or but but it's just it's just it, so if you are absolutely failing in any of the other several like pillars you, you, you're done like there is no hope for you because if you live a lifestyle where you're just unbelievably stressed out and you feel like angry all the time and you have resentment and you just your your mental state is so bad and you're just negative like the diet is not going to do enough because that mental state is so bad that it's going to not allow that diet to work right and if you get zero sunlight at all ever you're just inside all day you could eat the perfect diet. It's still not going to work properly. So while while the diet is number one, to, most important, I agree with you, you need to reach at least a minimum threshold on yeah. all the other pillars. Like you need to get at least somewhere with them. You can't rely only on on the diet. That That's just, uh -huh. it, it'll fail. Mm. Yeah, so we, we advocate a carnival diet and we, at the moment, you know, push cooked meat. We say cooked meat is good. Um, It's better than... 99% of foods that most people would be eating and a lot of people have changed their lives on cooked meat. Um, and we do see your points for eating raw meat and the benefits that you get from raw meat and we can't deny your experience. I, I do see where you're coming from. What sort of what sort of would you say to us of why we should start incorporating raw meat into our diet or if we should in the first place? Um, so what I like about raw meat is that it allows us all to detox. 
we all have so many toxins accumulated inside our bodies. And what raw meat does is it allows for the toxins to be bound to bacteria and removed through the body. And I think most of our diseases are, are toxicity based. There are deficiency related diseases, of course, but I think a lot of them are toxicity. Things like the shampoos, the conditioners, the deodorants, the toothpaste, all the toxins in our environment, the sunscreens, everything that we put onto our bodies topically and also in the air, of course. I think these are really what are destroying us. And we need to remove these somehow. I mean, great ways to remove them are getting bacteria from food that will do it for us. So that's one reason I eat raw meat. I had a really hard detox from raw meat. Um, it wasn't a virus. Those aren't even like whatever. Uh, so it was just a really hard detox. And also it's just, I mean, it's that feeling of euphoria that I described that I feel like people just need to get a sense of, they, they need to get a taste of it and just figure out what that's like. And also they should just give it a try, you know, like mm. the, 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 the reasons are there, bacteria, enzymes, nutrients. Um, the fact that cooked meat is not a natural diet, cooked carnivore is not a natural diet. There's nothing natural about it. Every society incorporates raw meat that eats only meat, always raw foods. We were consuming raw organs throughout our history. There is no cooked carnivore diet with no organs, with no raw organs through history. It's just, it's just unheard of. It's unfounded. And so if you want to eat naturally, you want to be optimal and you want to test something out, you're trying to be the best version of yourself, then it's really worth it to, to give Rami a try. And I'm not even saying like, it, you don't even need to give it a month. You can give it a couple of days. Like that's all that it'll take. You'll notice a difference. Yeah. So we have to remember, although Bart K did, you know, discuss with you this morning, he didn't say that it's not possible to yield a benefit from raw meat. He just said that cook meat does the job and he's been doing it for a while and it works well for him. And, you know, with the stuff he was saying about the literature, cooked meat, you know, is sufficient. That's what he was saying. Um, so I really think that before just sort of going at you and sort of saying, oh, no, nah, I'm going to eat cooked meat, like really should, we should just give it a try. We should be uh, open-minded because um, you never know. It could change our life. It could feel amazing from it. And yeah, so that's sort of why we reached out to you today. We just want to, you know, hear your thoughts about that and maybe yeah. we'll give raw meat a try. We're always open to everything. Actually, no, we'll promise right now that we will do a seven day raw meat challenge. Oh, let's soon. go. We yeah. promise. We promise. Yeah. Nice. Hopefully, as soon as you move out, which should be in a couple of weeks, and then we'll get it. We'll get that done. 100%. Yeah. Nice. People should be open minded. Like, they, they just got to try it, you know? Mm. You know? Right. Still gonna no, that's that, 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 yeah. that's going to be an awesome video. Yeah, you guys are going to like it. Thank you so much, Joy, for coming on. It was awesome to talk to you. Thank you for giving us your time. Uh, do you have any final words? Um, just give give it a try. Stay open minded, and uh, yeah, it was good talking to you guys again. Yeah, thanks uh, for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys.